Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast. I am Patrick Lyons. I'm Susie Hunter. Patrick, we did not get swept by the Oakland A's. That pew, was pew, all pew. I asked for. Actually, that's not all I asked for this weekend, but after Friday and Saturday, that was my biggest request. Absolutely. Sweet. We're on sweep watch. First it was hug watch, then sweep watch. We're always, we're definitely on strong hug watch this time of year. Rockies get it done. Two nothing. Shutout victory. Ty Black's the story. We oh. caught up with him. That was wonderful to see. Talk about all the drama with, that the Oakland Athletics are dealing with uh, in general. Some lineup tinkering, but uh, stories of the of the weekend so far. Handsome Randy, as some people have grown to call him. <laughs> I don't know if it's just Nate. Uh, October nineteen, but he calls him Handsome Randy. Okay, staying. In Fuego, uh, two homers in a row on Friday and Saturday night uh, has been absolutely amazing. And today, sure, maybe uh, at the plate he didn't have the same pop that he's been in the past, but defensively does it with a huge full extension mm-hmm. grab in right field that helped out. And again, a very close 2 nothing game. That wasn't the only play that could have decided this one. Yeah, definitely. I will say... Um, it's so fun to see Randall Gritchick just like hitting this hot streak right here, closing in on the trade deadline, because that's definitely a guy that I would love to see go to a contender. Sure, sure. We, we want everybody on this roster to win. I mean, yeah, I, actually, <laughs> I want everyone to be a contender, but like he is. But here. But here. But I know it's not going to happen here this <laughs> year. So I just want the best for everyone. For sure. Yeah. Talking. <laughs> Talking with some people about like, hey, what's going to happen? Is is anything going to happen? What's been the problem? But as it was pointed out to me, you know, you can't force another team to trade with you. Uh, you can't force another team to take Randall Gritchick. That being said, uh, there's got to be a couple teams out there what that could would, certainly use. What team would have to be forced to take a Randall Gritchick? Well, that's My the goodness. thing. That's the thing. And, and that's part of the whole I think issue going back in the last two years is do you take less than the perceived value on a player? If you're GM Bill Schmidt, do you take less than what you perceive, at least just to get something? But then if you just get something, now other teams are going to know, oh, they're easy to deal with. They'll take just something. And so you have to play hardball. So I'm hoping that maybe, just maybe, the one trade between 2021 trade deadline and the 2022 trade deadline is going to pay off now for the Rockies because they played hardball. They didn't give in on their demands. And so now maybe they'll get what they've demanded. Seems like they did in the two trades so far with uh, Mike Moustakas and Pierce Johnson. We've got uh, 36-ish hours, give or take, less than 48 hours. Mm -hmm. 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Tuesday, August 1st. We'll see what happens. I know. It's going to be juicy for sure. We're really closing in on that trade deadline. We also learned this weekend Rockies... Still in need of more pitching. There's never <laughs> enough pitching. We've seen this with our own eyeballs. We just like keep needing more pitching. Chris Flexen, great pickup, did a wonderful job in Albuquerque. Seemed like he could have been a guy on the Rockies radar for a while, and they get him on the cheap, claim him on waivers. He gets to start on Saturday, number 32, previously worn by Denelson Lamette. Hasn't been that long. Take that with a grain of salt. I know. I, I was thinking, I'm like, gosh, when was the last time? And then it came back to me like right away. I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's been in rotation for a while. Uh, doesn't look great, but he is the 15th different starting pitcher to start a game for and the Rockies. That's the record. And Top. we'll definitely have at least 15 more by the end of the 15, season. <laughs> 15 really, new guys. I think it could happen. Yeah, that ties with 1993 <laughs> and 2014. 1993, of course, your expansion team. You're just trying to get through the season. This, 2014, I mean, they were just down bad. And this season, we're down bad. A little bit. We're down, we're, we're down real bad I think we, in terms of pitchers. A couple weeks ago, we had looked at this when they were at 13, and we said... Hey, there's somebody that's in another organization that will still make a start. I'm still of the mindset that there's still one other guy. I thought about this. I, I pitched this to some people in the press box okay. today. If we did like a fantasy draft, f- you select five pitchers. I select five pitchers on other rosters who are both good candidates to be designated assi- for assignment mm-hmm. and would be great candidates for the Rockies to pick up. At, on that list, at least one of the 10 guys we come up with, you know, is going to start a game for the Rockies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably, Probably. yes. We'll get to 16, I think, uh, for sure. And we saw some lineup tinkering today, which was interesting. 
rest day for Jerks and Profar. He did end up getting into the game, not in a good way. We'll talk about that in regards to Sunday's contest. But you had Ezekiel Tovar batting leadoff. You didn't have Elias Diaz anywhere, but you had Ryan McMahon batting second, and that came up uh, in a big way. He had the two lone RBIs in two different at-bats. RBIs? What are RBIs? Ooh, I did slip it. I said that. What are RBIs, Patrick? Run so, batted in? So that's when there's two players with multiple RBI <laughs> games. You say that those two guys had RBIs. No. No. <laughs> there's no. You caught me. I didn't even know I said that. Wow. You know I, You know I'm in the team RBI though. You know. I know you are. I know you are. I just keep, keep, I'm out here keeping you honest. Are you keeping Someone me in check? Has to. And I appreciate that. That's the first rule of RBI club. <laughs> Call somebody out if they pluralize it. Unless it's ours bi, then you're just having fun. Probably it's a Susie show on a Friday. It's yeah, you're and just it's being like, silly. We're being silly. We're in ours the silly, goofy mood. Yes. I appreciate that. Keeping me in check. Ty Block kept the A's in check. Yes, he Fantastic. did. Fantastic. Spot start. They needed innings. They got that and then some for what Marcotte, manager of the, uh, the A's, said vintage performance, old school performance. But Black said it was just, you know, classic pitching. Pitching at its best mm -hmm. was his exact words. Five shutout innings for the little cat. For the little cat, that's right. And it's uh, been wild to see him move up and down with the Rockies. He's He was DFA'd earlier this year. Was he DFA'd last season, too, at the end yes, of it? Yeah, he was. So. so he's been DFA'd a couple of times in the past calendar year, but has stuck with the Rockies organization. And to see him come out and give us five shutout innings when we needed it the most, thank you, Ty Block. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Thank you. <laughs> stepped up in, in a big way for his hometown team. In fact, we caught up with him post game. Uh, and you could see the, the, the glint in his eye, the twinkle yeah. in his teeth and his smile. Just feeling great, as he should, as he pitched fantastic mm -hmm. against the A's today. Here's what he had to say post game. When I was down in AAA um, for a couple months, I was built up to about 75 pitches. So um, I think that was about two months ago. So I knew I had more in the tank there. Um, but I hadn't thrown that many for a while. So um, we were kind of talking about it in the dugout. And I said I had more. But he said, yeah, let's just roll with the bullpen. They did a great job. So a uh, tremendous game by the whole the whole pitching staff. And uh, it was fun to see. It seems like any ballpark you play in the summer with the heat, the ball's going to travel a little bit more. But he said that you'll be starting at some point. Uh, in St. Louis, you change your approach for what you were able to do today and the success you had? No, I think you just go out and attack hitters and uh, let the defense make plays. They were tremendous out there today. Uh, the double play they turned there for me in the fifth was huge. Uh, Ryan made a tremendous play on that, and uh, Brenton ran down some balls, and Harold made a couple really nice plays. Tovar with a runner on third, great play in the hole. So just having those guys out there, it's tremendous to have that kind of defense behind you, and you just go out and attack hitters. And, makes your job a lot easier on the mound. Moments ago, Buddy was talking about how you are such a reliable member of this pitching staff and how you know you are a guy who could have gone anywhere and wanted to be here with your hometown club. What is that, when you hear something like that from Buddy, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I think it just kind of goes to show like uh, there's times in this game where you're going to struggle. I, I had a tough first month of the year and uh, they had confidence in me and they said, hey, if you stick with us, uh, we think there's a chance for you back here again. And uh, it just goes to show that, you know, they're loyal to us. And that, that's really cool to know that um, they're there supporting us. And uh, it makes you have a lot of confidence as a pitcher knowing that they want you here. And for me to be able to be back and uh, doing it again is really special. You've been through a lot in your career and even up and down these past two years. When you have an outing like this that is efficient and so successful, do you take some time to kind of cherish it or take it in? Or, or what do outings like this mean to you with everything you've battled through? Yeah, I think for me, anytime I get to take the ball on the big league stage, it's a blessing. So I just cherish every opportunity and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to have fun and uh, just go out and do what I've done for you know, thousands of innings in my career. So uh, it's it's just fun to be playing this game still at this stage of my career and uh, to be able to do it in my hometown uh, for my, my hometown team uh, with a bunch of alumni guys that I grew up watching. You know, today I was walking in from the bullpen. And I was like, I'm going to try to channel my inner Jorge De La Rosa. So <laughs> uh, I thought that was pretty fun. And uh, so just for me to be able to do that, it's really special. And that's that. the guy you want on the mound on a Sunday the preacher that's it so blessed and on alumni day with the legends out yes. summoned his inner jdlr jorge de la rosa yep. J he summoned the inner jdlr for tptb the preacher tie block
Should we go call him TPTB? Do you like that? I, I you know what? I'm kind of into it. I'm kind of into it. I originally, in, in my head, I had TTPB, <laughs> Ty, the preacher block. But I think TPTB no. sounds better. Yeah. It's got a good ring to it. Yeah. TP. That was cool. TBTP. Yes. It's a tongue twister. It is. But it's a great start. He's got 11 yes. consecutive scoreless innings. In fact, in the month of July, he has not given up an earned run. 10.1 innings pitched. That was really, really huge. Ryan McMahon, as we said, did a nice job offensively. He hasn't struck out in three consecutive games. Longest stretch of the season for him. Love to see that. Nolan Jones had two hits. Seventh stolen base of the season. Third two-hit game in July. Unfortunately, he does exit the game with some cramping. In the ninth inning, Jerickson Profar goes out to left field. He actually did something earlier on in the game trying to beat mm -hmm. out. Um, I think he was trying to break up a double play over at first base, and he came up kind of limping just a little bit. Yeah, he earlier. like kind of stopped for a little bit right. afterwards and like kind of bent over a little bit. So I'm like, oh gosh, what's going on here? Did, yeah. he, win did he just get winded? Because he like was really <laughs> booking it. <laughs> well, he made a nice catch out in left center field to, to help out Daniel Bard in the eighth, who I think gains a little bit of momentum. Uh, he was certainly happy about the catch that... Nolan Jones made an in left center field, so hopefully Bard gained some momentum despite, despite the fact that he walked the leadoff hitter. Did give up a 400-plus foot shot to Brent Rooker that would have been a home run in 29 out of 30 other ballparks. <laughs> also got a caught stealing from Austin Wins, one of those unassisted caught stealings where the runner came off the base. With Seth Brown at the plate, Makatsai said post game, we really like the Seth Brown Daniel Bard matchup, mm -hmm. and so Rooker uh, would have been would have tied the game there. Maybe a base hit, even from Seth Brown, would have extended the inning. Would have only made it two one at that point. Uh, had had Kemp been safe at second, but uh, he gains a little bit of momentum there, so that's that's nice for him. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Welcome to the podcast where we agree with each other. <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook <laughs> is a place that you can see if the things that you and your friends don't necessarily agree on. You can find out who's right and with some financial windfall. You're going to find out with your wallet who That's was right it. and who was wrong. New customers, you can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code DNVR. You bet just $5 and you score $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code DNVR only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Massachusetts, call 1-800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700 on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. In West Virginia, gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling at 888 888- 789-7777 or visit ccpg.org 21 or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. One boost per eligible game. Opt-in required. Maximum bet $50. 10 or more legally required for 100% boost. Eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions apply this one's easy. Breck Brew, Palisade Peach Wheat. Ooh. It's a Colorado company made with 100% renewable energy. From right on the other side, the Western Slope, Palisade Peaches. They're delicious. Now they come in alcohol form, thanks to Breck Brew. <laughs> Fruit forward, <laughs> unfiltered American-style wheat ale, bursting with bright and juicy peach flavor. It's amazing. Fruit forward. I guess uh, there's only two more days, Sunday and Monday, of... <sighs> Palisade Peach being our beer of the month here at the DMVR bar. So I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. it. It served us well this month, I think. Honestly, like it's been my favorite show beer. When I do, if I do a show beer, it's been Palisade Peach. That's and good. it's been a really good month. It's been a great month for that, for sure. Yeah, just head, go, head over to breckbrew.com to find out a Breck Brew near you. So no disclaimer there. Just, hey, we're going to help you out. Go there. Find out where you can get some Breck Brew. We appreciate it. The kid, C-O-M-N. Not too happy right now with uh, the, the state of the team. That was one of the things I did not hear the sell the team chance today, today. today. Yeah, Didn't on Sunday. Didn't hear it today. Didn't hear it today on Sunday. I, I was watching the game on television on Saturday. Very clearly could hear it on the broadcast. Yeah, you And could. then when I was there, you know, in person on Friday, definitely heard it. But I was surprised I didn't hear it um, on Friday. Much smaller or crowd. on Sunday, rather. Sorry. Right, right. Yeah, much smaller crowd. Only 31,000. I was shocked, actually that it was that few, partially because yesterday was 45,000 with Star Wars Day. Okay, that's fine. 
That's still a huge drop off, especially when you consider Friday night, it was 37,000. So I had set the over under about 118,000. And I thought, yeah, after the first two games, that was going to be easy money right there. And no, Surprised. Kenneth Weber got it. He took the under on that. He was right. He was actually right. So Rockies fans helping support Oakland A's fans saying like, yeah, what's happening over there is not fair. The, the team is basically antagonizing the fans. Yeah. And it, it's an ugly situation. Do there. you think that Rockies fans were being supportive of Oakland? Or do you think they heard the Oakland fans chanting sell the team and Rockies fans thought, hey, me too. I want that for my team. Because there are a lot, I, I've got to say, like, I've just seen, like, a lot of the responses that we've gotten to a lot of our posts about all of those Oakland fans on our DNVR Rockies Twitter account. And a lot of people, like, seem to think that Rockies fans are the ones protesting, which, like, with good reason. Yeah. It's I, a really frustrating time to be a Rockies fan. But I think, like, a lot of fans who aren't necessarily totally in the know right. seem to think that it's Rockies fans who are protesting. Yes. I mean, if you're showing up to Coors Field specifically for Star Wars Day uh, and you're walking around Coors Field in a full Chewbacca outfit, you're there's a strong chance you're going, what? They're Rockies fans? This is how they feel? You're probably going to think that because you're right. You're not necessarily in the know. We know that Rockies fans are obviously frustrated with ownership. And there are, but not even to a, an organized yeah, degree. No, no, no. We haven't reached the level that Oakland has reached. Look, and Denver, I hope we never get that bad. Wouldn't right. it be nice if you know things just start to turn around? I think you know we will be better in the next couple of years. We talk about this all the time, but Denver has great baseball fans, knowledgeable baseball fans. So knowing, hey, the A's are coming to town. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly. I could put myself to into a different time where I'm a different human being living a different life. I would have co come to the series to like chant and to support A's fans. Yeah. And said, yeah, you know what? I, I'm going to get my voice out there and feel like I'm a part of this movement just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And because we have so many great baseball fans in Denver, I wouldn't be surprised if you know, there were a lot of that, that felt that way too. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, uh, I would say for, I, I think a lot of fans, maybe it was a little inspirational, like, oh, they can organize this protest on the road too. I don't want to talk at a school, but okay. it, I I saw somewhere allegedly there's another reverse reverse boycott going on. That's not alleged, but I think there's another reverse boycott going on in Oakland, and the A's may have uh, jacked up the ticket prices for that game, either again to antagonize <laughs> fans to just kind of cash in a little bit. That's kind of wild to think they would do that. I, that is villainous. That is as if the A's <laughs> organization couldn't be more hurtful to their fans. That I hope that's not true because that is fucked up. What else could they do? Here's the thing. Like if you were like made a list, what else could the A's do at the Coliseum like ownership? Like to just further antagonize fans, like and to make more money. Like maybe final game of the season, you're giving away the sell shirts. Like that would be like, wait, what kind of bizarro world revert? We're boycotting your boycott, and we're just gonna give those shirts away to anyone who buys a ticket. That that's just wild that they're doing that. It, it the whole situation has just been so awful, and there have been so many moments where I'm looking at their situation and thinking like. Man, it really couldn't get any worse, and it just keeps getting a little worse. And yeah. Oakland fans deserve better because they are good baseball fans too. Facts, facts on that. Fle uh, Chris Flexen making his Rockies debut, yanked in the fourth inning, gives a four hit, six runs, five earned, six walks. HR Black, not a fan of that. Oh one. my gosh, Buddy must have been just reeling. Fifth pitcher in franchise history to have six or more walks in his Rockies debut. Last was Austin Gomber. So in a way, he's in good company. <laughs> You're like, I but mean, I don't know how to take that. Nothing against Austin Gomber, but Austin Gomber has had some rough outings this season. My guy for start of the year. Your guy, but he ha has not had start Come of the year now. yet. Come on now. He's up there. By the way, Peter Lambert. I saw what he did his last start out. Peter he's Lambert, making you proud. He's making you proud. Potential. Although maybe Ty Block is going to be our best starter of the year. Ooh, I don't know. You know, he I might could be honestly like he could be. I'm sticking with my prediction of Peter Lambert, but I'm sticking with Gomber too. He's he's been he's been really nice. CJ Crone, three hits all weekend. One on Friday, two on Saturday. One today extended his hit streak to a season best nine games. 
that also started before he was on the IL. One of those Does, weird yeah, ones. Yeah. Uh, Michael Tolia, loved he had an RBI in the first on Saturday during that 11-3 to loss. Four game losing streak there. They snapped it today. That was really great. He had a little hitting streak going. Did Tolia get a hit today? Because he did have a, have a nice season oh, long Hold on. Where's hit my, streak. Where's my but unfortunately today it did get snapped. Did have the three strikeouts in his four plate appearances. You also had uh, a similar hit total for both teams. A's 13. Yeah. Rockies 12. Walk total totals far from similar. Rockies walked eight batters. A's walked zero. You're Rockies talking about Saturday? Hitters. Saturday's okay, game. Okay, we're talking yeah. about Saturday. Yeah. Not great. Uh, Freeland got back out there, did his best, wasn't great. Four innings pitched, five and runs. you're talking about Friday here. Three earned runs on Friday okay, start. Okay, so now we're on Friday. An 8-5 loss. There was that one play, uh, you know, he tried to maybe do another jump throw. That was a little bit scary when he went down. Yeah. That was that was a little worrisome, but uh, got tagged for his 11th loss of the year, tied for most in the NL. Seven consecutive losing decisions for him. Uh, longest streak for a Rocky this season, tied with Connor Siebold. That is, I mean, that was tough to see. Friday was, was messy. There were some nightmare innings. Yeah. And Kyle Freeland did not look like the Kyle Freeland that we're used to. In a different year, does he go on a rehab start? Probably. Also, do you do you have a guy go out on a rehab start partially to just build up his his you know pitch count? I think he was somewhere around 70 mm. uh, on Friday for Freeland. But you say, well, I we've kind of have four or five better options right now anyway. So you know what? You go out, lengthen a little bit. We'll hold down the fort. The Rockies don't have anybody else to hold down the fort, especially with Chase Anderson just going on the IL. So you go, you know what, Kyle, you're going to have to take one for the team. And instead of you know, starting with Albuquerque, you're going to start under the bright lights of the big leagues uh, and go against the Oakland Athletics. It's unfortunate. Taking one for the team. like it, just, That's what it was. You know, that's an expression, but that was literally, it was literal for Kyle Freeland. Yeah, and that was... Tough loss. It's tough to drop two to a team like the Oakland A's. Very tough. It, Not, and it was, they, those were, I think those were pretty ugly losses. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't help that, you know, you lost to the second worst team in the National League, the Washington Nationals on the yeah, road. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's like we just came off this series with the Nationals and that, I mean, that series frustrated me so much because that should have been a rocky sweep. Yeah. That literally should have been a sweep, and instead the Rockies lost that series. So then to lose the series to the A's immediately after, a rough week for the Rockies. Lawrence got the save today. Yes, he that did. That was good. That was really good. Yes, Getting back on that. track with that. On Friday night, Tovar, 100th career base hit already. Oh, congratulations to the young man. Uh, Our studio audience is eating it up. I saw some friends today at the game, and I was kind of giving them the friends? breakdown. Friends. Your friends. Yeah. Amazing. And, Continue. Uh, and uh, and let them know. Give them the rundown. Okay, Nolan Jones. This kind of this guy's like the next dude. Ezekiel Tovar, mm -hmm. rookie of the year award conversation. And they're like, how old is he? He's so young. I'm like, well, he'll be 22 in a couple days. Mm -hmm. So that's that's fine. Um, he's a dad. Give him the rundown. Got his 100th base hit in just his 105th game it was a uh, multi-hit game 21st multi-hit game of the year 12th rocky to start his career with at least 100 hits in his first 105 games first to do it since david Dahl. oh oh he's not in good company there <laughs> oh no uh, hey look <laughs> poor david Dahl. <laughs> you could be in good company if maybe you were previously in bad company with the folks over at bacchus and shanker bacchus and shanker because they are here to help you out they win for colorado families they've been doing it for 25 plus years go to colorado.net give them a call 222-2222 partially because you can give uh you can let them consult you right you can find out hey do i even have a case it's not a waste of their time at all they're here to help you out they've got 100 folks on staff 25 different lawyers they're going to support you in fact they are going to be working on your case potentially without even seeing a dime. That's kind of what they do. They've they've won their clients over a billion dollars over the year. They got offices in Denver, Aurora, Inglewood, and Fort Collins. Bacchus and Shanker has got the strength and power to win your case, whether it's, you know, car accident, motorcycle, ride chair, pedestrian, you name it. Give them a call because they win two 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 folks at Bacchus and Shanker. Bacchus and Shanker. The folks over at Foco.com. Folks at Foco. Ooh. Crushing it. They are between 
the bobbleheads, oversized bobbleheads too, which are great. They really almost harken back to the original bobbleheads, essentially, because bobbleheads used to have these large heads to bobble on, and then the technology, the bobblehead technology got so good that it was almost the life-size head on the body. They've got plenty of those. They look awesome, but they've, they've gone back to the roots. They've gone back to the big head bobbleheads. I love that. <laughs> I do love like, that. What? They got Beanie Babies. They've got overalls. They've got all kinds of stuff for the Denver Nuggets. Rockies as well. Cool part, they've got colleges too. Just about every Division One team you can think of, you're going to find for the folks that were there for CSU Day today on Sunday at the ballpark. Boom. You can go ahead and get some of their gear over at FOCO.com. Yes, and use code DNVR to get 10% off all non-presale items as well. Love Wonderful. Our, love our folks at FOCO. Absolutely. One of the biggest things when we talk about weird, wild, and wonderful mm. from the weekend series for the <laughs> Colorado Rockies. One was that guy right there, Charlie Blackman, taking batting practice. Love to see that going down. He's, uh, well, we'll give you the news on him in just a second. But his hero, his guy that helped him when he uh, came up in the big leagues in 2011, Carlos Gonzalez came back as part of the Carlos alumni. Carlos back. That was only 37 years old. Doesn't look a day over 18. I was going to say, um, the Rockies posted a video. I don't know what year this video is from, but it was a video of Cargo and Spilly. I'm assuming it's from a, a long time ago, but Cargo looks exactly the same. He does. Spilly, I wish he looked the same with those sideburns. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that Spilly left the soul patch behind. It's the worst. <laughs> it does not work for him, I think. Cargo, look, Cargo still but got Cargo, it going on. Cargo still got it. Cargo looks great. His family is beautiful. His kids were adorable. It was great seeing them at the park. Yeah. Oh, it, my gosh. I loved it. I, I'm so happy to see Cargo back visiting. Good stuff. It's I, good stuff. I was just talking with Jorge De La Rosa and Pedro Stasio for a little bit. Meanwhile, the conversation was going. I could hear behind me. At being asked questions about his Taco Bell commercials and all this stuff. I'm like, all right, I got I to gotta cut these conversations short. I need to go talk with Cargo. So here's a little bit of that. We've got a couple of videos up on the DNVR Sports Channel mm -hmm. live on YouTube where you can watch the full-length interview uh, with Carlos Gonzalez. But here's actually a little taste of that right now of what Cargo had to say on Saturday, being back at Coors Field for the first time since 2019. We asked him about what he remembered about you, both as a player when he was against you and as a man. One of the things he said was that you were so vital to the club for everybody, I mean, not just outfielders, position players, everybody. Was that, did you do that consciously or was that just because that's who you are? <laughs> no, I mean, that's something that you don't ask for. Like, you don't really pay attention to those stuff, you know. I just, I, I always enjoy just being around here, you know, just getting in early and, and, and being around my teammates and go work and be in the cage and just, make jokes and things like that so apparently everybody likes it so you know and, and, uh, it's really mentioned that uh, earlier today he says you know as soon as you walk in the clubhouse the first thing you say is like where's cargo you're like where's cargo where's cargo so i was like i can't can even i can't even be sick one day because i've been there i've been in the training room trying to get treatment and they're all like where's cargo oh, let's get to cargo in the, in the training room so yeah but it's one of those things that i you know i, I feel I, I feel happy and blessed that you know that that I get along well with all my teammates, and not just my teammates, just people in general around the organization. Is uh, I'm just trying to be a human being and just be me. That's it. What do you miss most? Playing, you know, playing. Obviously, you know, you always have that competitor in you. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna compete. Even I still compete with my kids. You know, if we're playing Uno, we're playing whatever. I wanna win, and I wanna beat them. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the that's the one thing that you miss the most when you're an athlete. You wanna. You want to compete, but uh, you know, just being around here it just feels right. You know, I'm excited and, and I'm excited to you know to watch the game. And uh, obviously, it's different than before because now I get to see with my family and I can, I can explain my children how how the game is going. So it's beautiful. Do you pay much attention to how the Rockies are doing? I, I watch. Yeah, I still watch games, and uh, not not a lot like I get used to because you know we, we got we got a lot of things going on with my with my family. But uh, every night, if I don't if I don't watch the game, at least I try to watch the highlights and see how the teams are going and things like that. You were in spring training a couple of years ago. Any part of you wants to get back and help these guys, even at this level, even just every now and then? I mean, yeah. I mean, I would I would love to play. I would love to play forever. That's just it's part of us, you know. Uh, but, you know, I haven't, I haven't grabbed a bat in a while, so 
Uh, if I ever wanted to come back, I, I, I got to put a lot of work in and make sure that I'm, you know, that I'm gonna be able to help you, help the, whoever signed me. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, you never stop, you never stop being connected with the game. You know, uh, I, I, I still got calls all the time. You know, no lines FaceTime me or this guy's FaceTime me, like, hey, or Winker from the Brewers or like the guys that I trained during the offseason. Like, hey, Carl, can I ask you a question? And of course, you know. So it's. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's impossible to, to not have baseball involved uh, every single day. What about uh, coaching? You coached some in spring training, answered some questions. And, you know, this level, I can see a left-handed hitter. <laughs> what about that? I, feel, I mean, I, I, I feel like I, I don't look for it. I don't look for anything at this point. It's just I feel like, you know, things will come whenever whenever it's time to come. But, uh, like I said, I'm still I'm still involved with baseball because you know I know a lot of guys that are still playing and whenever they need any advice or, or you know or hitting tip or whatever they always call me and, and you know I'm willing to help them out you know not in like a you know and obviously I don't have a contract I'm not a coach but you know that's something that I I feel like I can I can get done in the future we'll see how it goes. Where's cargo? All the players want to know. They, oh they won't gosh. leave him alone even um, on the training table. Uh, is there? I mean, there are few Rockies who are more beloved than Carlos Gonzalez. It's true. Very few. Uh, if, if any. any. If any. If, it, he's definitely on the Mount Rushmore of belovedness, for yes. sure. I mean, Nolan Arenado still loves him, still texts him all the time. I loved his expression when he was asked, hey, is there still a comeback in your future? It's still only 37 years old. Right? He's He's only a little bit older than Charlie Blackman, who's still grinding away. And you go, I could see him still being around for two more years. How old's Daniel Bard? I think he's also 37. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he took a little bit of a break. Well, let's just get it. Let's just sign him again. Let's sign him and see what happens. Bring him back. Why not? Why the hell not? Have another player coach combination. That's nice. Uh, it was weird seeing there were not as many as athletics jerseys. Than I, uh, as I thought I would see. I mean, I think that make, maybe makes sense. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people from Oakland or the Bay, Air Bay Area moving to Denver. Everyone moves not, to not Denver. That is a thing. Everyone moves to Denver. From like Oakland people? Is that a thing? Every, why not? People from California love, Everyone love loves Colorado. coming to Colorado because California got really expensive. And That's now true. all the California people move here to make Colorado more expensive. The Californians. Ugh. Saw some, I saw a Jed Lowry, Jose Canseco, Vita Blue, Dave Stewart, Reggie Jackson, number number nine. That was what he wore when he was in Oakland. Where Though, did you see these guys? At the ballpark. This Coors weekend? Field today. Yeah. Really? It was great. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It was pretty neat. It was pretty neat seeing all those guys. Saw some of the cell shirts. Okay. Uh, also, this was wonderful. This is an article over at the DNVR.com to check out. Sam Mole, a name that the diehards will know. Very well, as he was the third player drafted by the Rockies in the 2013 MLB draft after mm -hmm. John Gray, Ryan McMahon. He goes third there in the third round, 77th overall. Actually got designated for assignment for Ryan McMahon in 2017 when McMahon made his debut, bounced around a couple places, got you know made his debut in 2017 with the A's. Kicked around a little bit, finally has latched on, has been had a successful career the last three years with the A's. But Friday, as well as today, first time pitching at Coors finally. Field. Finally. In a decade, a decade finally. later. Finally. Yeah, it's pretty neat. That is, it's always wild to see the journeys these guys go on. Yeah, it was really cool that he was able to to be there and he can remember, you know, he pointed up to the press box, like, yeah, we were there. I signed my papers and I looked down and said, man, one day it'll be great. I'll, I'll, I'll get to play here. And, Again, it took a took, took a, a different route. Almost, took, almost didn't. Almost didn't. Almost didn't. Yeah, I, uh, I was talking with someone today, Elias Sports Bureau. Well, I'm not with them, but I was wondering. They'll know the answer. Is this the most attended series between two last place teams <laughs> in the American and National League? Like 110,000. Oh. Now, granted, you can only go back to like '97 when interleague really first started. But that's still a lot of time. That's kind of wild, right? I mean, honestly, yeah. I gotta say though, I mean, I know that there were really good promos this weekend, but yeah. I was surprised that attendance was as good for two teams that are just not doing their their best. They they are not putting their best foot forward. 
Denver's a great baseball town, man. The, Den- the the Rockies fans, the Denver fans, the baseball fans. Maybe there are a lot of Oakland people who had just moved. They're now Denver baseball fans. <laughs> uh, I think that's a creative way of saying it. And still, uh, in 2012, the Red Sox were like the second worst team in the American League. And they, well, it's Fenway Park, so they're averaging 37,000 per game. So, like, all right, that's that's kind of the benchmark. This series probably goes ahead. I did learn on Saturday... Chris Bryant, who uh, had his bobblehead, his Star Wars bobblehead. Yes. What was your final rating on that as far as the they, lookalike? Okay, they did this last year. They did it again this year. They are not getting his nose right. His <laughs> nose, like, turns up a little bit, and it's adorable, and the bobblehead does not capture that. Also, we need a little more twinkle in the eyes. I was thinking, what do you A get? little more twinkle. We got to throw some glitter in there. We got to have a bobble ball. <laughs> That of course being the eyeball, and it like it shimmers. It's like almost like a mirror ball as the eyeball. It don't have to be a really gigantic head. The head would have to be the whole thing, and just the eyes bobble for for sparkles. Isn't really going. I, I think eyes bobbling. It's giving gritty. Oh, could it's be. It's giving gritty. Everyone's the gonna want Flyers that giveaway mascot. though. <laughs> it's and, gonna be. I think Chris Bryant would sue the organization if they put out a creepy bobblehead like that of him. Well. I did learn that KB's got a decent little bobblehead collection, he said. Yeah, you, Mostly you his former this. teammates. You mentioned this. So Not of himself, but of former teammates. So that was interesting learning that about him. I mean, you know what? I love that. I think that's so supportive that's of cool. your dudes. That's cool. Like, I, oh, this guy that I played with, this guy that I'm friends with, he has a bobblehead. Let me keep this forever. I can only imagine his palatial estate. Like in the basement, he's got like basically a museum. Like he talked about how in Miami they've got a little museum there. I'm like, he's probably got like museums, you know, quality glass up there with all those bobbleheads. Yeah. That would be that'd be pretty badass. I like that. Oh I do like gosh. that. And uh, finally, what was wonderful was all the dudes on the comeback trail. Brendan Rogers homers on Friday night. Mm-hmm. Tyler Kinley uh, pitched last night. Charlie Blackman taking the live BP. He did say that. Uh, Albuquerque's probably where he's going to go do a little rehab assignment. Don't know if it'll be for two games or what, but he'll go down there. So he'll be on the IL past the uh, trade deadline. So you can quit those Charlie Blackman to uh, Atlanta trade rumors. Sean Bouchard, and then here are the two big ones. Sean Bouchard may return before the year is out. Maybe not to the may, not for the Rockies, but at least in, in Albuquerque. Like their season goes until I think September 20th, 21st. Yeah, so. they like, yeah, they make it. To like close to the Pretty end close. of September. Yeah, that's good. It didn't used to be like that. It used to, I feel like it did. Yeah, like a month earlier. Yeah, I like no, it usually, now. Yeah, no. Back in the day, minor league baseball ended around Labor Day weekend. That's right. So that's not the case this year. That was great to hear anymore. about. Yeah, that's great to see uh, about Bouchard. And talked with Ryan Feltner, who said he hopes to make a couple starts here in 2023. He's going to travel yeah. with the club on the road. Has been talking with some folks about any kind of, you know, some kind of. Who knows what it looks like? Who knows if he even does this? Maybe some kind of protective uh, equipment for his head. You know, I said to him, I was like, "Hey, you could be a pioneer in this. Like this, this is this is a big deal." You know, in 15 years, would it be crazy to think that MLB institutes something where pitchers have to wear some kind of headgear? And again, if the technology is there, it's an easy transition. But yeah. in 15 years, that wouldn't be so crazy. Maybe Feltner could be that first guy. That's the 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 biggest domino to tip it forward. And now kids are using it in high school. Minor leaguers are using it. We'll wait and see what happens with that. We'll wait and see. Yeah, but it's we great were... to see that he's going to be on the way back. Yeah, yeah. No, I had spoke to him too. It seems like he's doing so well. It seems like, yeah, mentally, physically doing such a great job with his recovery from this ridiculous, <clears throat> potentially catastrophic injury. So we're just, of course, glad he's alive. Yeah. I am curious to see, though, like what kind of specialized headgear he would be looking at. Because, like, who's the pitcher who had, like, that big, goofy helmet? Like, I just can't see. Who is it? Alex Torres? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I just I can't see, like, pitchers wearing something so big. <laughs> sure. Just because, like, I feel like it would get in the way of your peripheral vision. So, if it was, like, some kind of headgear that was, like, super powerful... Like, maybe it's, like, freaking bulletproof, but it's the size of a hat. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, what it, like, Kevlar. Like, what Kevlar exactly. vests are made of. Yeah, you know, Could you have something? We? A little why, insert? Why can't we? On the cap? Uh, yeah. And then, like, obviously, there's a, a conversation to be had about, you know, having balance. Is it going to throw you off? Is it going to be able to stay on your head? Yeah, exactly. As far as balance goes, you play with it, you'll get used to it. 
it'll it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just it's like helmets. There were guys who were like, no, I'm not wearing a helmet. And then okay, you had to do it. And uh, I'm not gonna wear with an ear flap. And Gary Carter, last guy, just wearing the skull cap. And now everyone's wearing the C flap. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it it definitely evolves like that. I know we evolve here at the DNVR bar with there all our go. great specials, like Tuesdays, three dollar tacos and tequilas which is amazing. Head down here to the corner of Colfax, New York. Still got some more World Cup games going on. We're going to bring the cup home from Australia, New Zealand. You name it, it's going to be back here in the U.S. Hope they, uh, hope they can get that done. Happy hours on Thursdays, 4 to 6. Burger and beer specials on Friday for 11 bucks, And 15% off your food and drink altogether here at the DMVR Bar if you're signed up and you are a diehard. Access to the Diehards Only Discord, 20% off all the gear over at dnvrlocker.com. And all kinds of good deals over at Illegal Pete's, especially if you kick back and enjoy an ice-cold margarita. Mm. Cool off with a bucket of high noons. Five of them for just 22 bucks. It's your spot for burritos, beers, and buddies. And don't forget to follow them at Illegal Pete's on Instagram to stay updated on all their big events and deals going down this summer. Stay tuned to their stories, in fact, to win free tickets to concerts you are dying to see. Illegal Pete's is here to make this summer one for the books. Minimum a month left of summer. I know kids go back to school sooner than that, but that's their lives, kids, not ours. When do kids go back to school um, in Colorado? Pretty much middle of August. Interesting. And, like, and for some, it's like almost like after the first week. So it could be like August 8th, so weird. August 7th. Yeah. It's Does that mean like all the kids' choirs are going to start coming back? <laughs> it's been so nice without them. So nice. <laughs> it's literally been some of the best uh, national anthem performances of the season. <laughs> all because the kids are on vacation. They are. They are indeed. No summer camps. No summer camps in the national anthem. I'm fine with that. If they did, I'd, I'd probably give that a single, personally. That, that's my thought. If you were scoring it if like was it was a game, it. are you leading into a little batting around? Watch, watch, watch. That's, those oh, are three base hits. sound effects for this. You're out. That was an umpire <laughs> saying you're out. <laughs> All right. We are going to play this game called Batting Around. I love this on a Sunday because we are going to look through some baseball headlines, some baseball stories, things that have happened in the world of MLB. And Patrick is going to score them. So this is kind of a trade deadline edition because a lot of our headlines, we've got so much baseball news, a lot of trades happening, a lot of transactions. But Patrick, are you ready to start grading these, scoring these rather? I've got to strike out before we even start. Already there's one out. How? This Because this trade deadline, I feel like, is falling a little bit flat. You think it's flat? Right now. Right now where it's at, it's been a little bit flat. I'm sure we're going to get to it. There's been only one real major marquee name. Of course, there are tons of players who've already swapped teams that are going to make an impact on the postseason as well as you know the final month of the year. But still, like there's been all these names. Shohei was dangled for a little bit. Already, we got one out. I'm calling a strikeout. How, on one which out. bat? But like no one's up to the plate yet. Yeah, I, I can't. I, look, I'm not an official umpire. I don't know how they do it. But there's already one out coming to play. If you can come up to the to the plate and there's already one strike, you can be one out in this game batting around. We got one out. Patrick, <laughs> for someone who is like so rooted in the rules, you are so not rooted in the rules right now. Let's go. <laughs> Um, uh, I hate it. Thanks. All right. Let's talk about the Texas Rangers. The Texas Rangers in the past 48 hours, they got Jordan Montgomery Ooh. and Max Scherzer. Ooh. Crazy stuff. Patrick, how do you grade that? That's that's a three base. That's a three base hit right there. It's a triple. I like what they were able to do. They're going all in. You know, they're trading away some, some you know, uh, players that are far away. Uh, Luis Angel. Acuna, Ronald Acuna Jr.'s brother, goes over in that deal Can you, to the Mets for you Max got, Scherzer. You, you got you to relax, okay? You're, like, getting ahead of yourself here. I, I like it. It's a triple. They're okay. going all in. That's great. As they should. As they should, for sure. <clears throat> all right, Patrick. Next one, yeah, we're talking about this. In return for Scherzer, the Mets get Acuna's little brother, 21-year-old shortstop, Luis Angel Acuna. Ronald Acuna Jr.'s little brother. What do you think? Of that, that gets its own. The the Mets the Mets side of the, the transaction. The Mets side of the transaction. That side of the transaction. Uh, Some good genes right there. It's just a it's a it's a squib. It's a base hit. The run scores. It's okay. I mean, I, I feel bad for anyone who's a sibling of 
someone who's a superstar, like anybody that's in Giannis's family of his three other professional. His, uh, Giannis. Yeah, his, Giannis. Yeah. And ta -ka -ta -ka -pa -pa -pa. I can't. I'm not a basketball guy. Giannis. I go. See, that goes to show you. I, I call him Giannis half the time. My Greek Nigerian king. That's it. Yeah. I mean, he's got three brothers uh, that I recently learned of also professional ballers. Like mm -hmm. they just have to, you know, get answered, uh, ask those questions all the time and answer that. Um, so that's that's kind of unfortunate. It's a name. It's a splash. Very interesting from the fact that. Obviously, we know the Mets play in the same division as Atlanta, so that's a that's a cheeky transaction. But it's cheeky. a base hit. It is a base hit. Cheeky. Interesting. All right, next up, uh, let's talk about Cody Bellinger. The Cubs, according to sources, they're not going to trade Cody Bellinger now that they've closed the gap a little bit in that NL Central race because they just wrapped up an eight-game winning streak. The Cubs were on fire. The... Twitter account for CHGO underscore Cubs was <laughs> popping this weekend. As well it should. I I, I think that's uh, it's only a base hit, but it's a, it's a hard hit ball there. Uh, runners on first and second because that's what you want from a team who's on the fence. You're not sure are they going to be successful. Are they not? Are they going to be in contention? If you're not, there's a fine line to say, you know what? You got to be all out rather than all in or at least standing pat. In this case, Cubs are really just kind of standing pat and that's fine. Um, but they shouldn't be selling off any assets, especially in that division. One game over 500, as you mentioned, the eight-game winning streak's really nice. St. Louis, they're already out. You know, Pittsburgh got rid of Carlos Santana, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a tough road, but with three wildcard teams, this is what you hope for in Major League Baseball. There's going to be multiple teams still trying to hang around, you know, for just a little bit longer, and for the Cubs to do that, I think that's a, that's a good move. I think well said. Couldn't have said it better myself, Patrick. Next up at the plate, the Dodgers are buying Kike Hernandez is back. They got Lance Lynn and Joe Kelly. They they've they've been doing a lot. The Dodgers have been doing maybe the most during this trade deadline. I don't want to give the Dodgers any any kind of credit here. <laughs> I got to be careful on this one. Uh, it's going to be a walk. A They're going to get a walk. They didn't make are it out. Are you saying the bases are loaded right now? Yeah, yes. Uh, didn't 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 do much. Didn't get a run home. But, yeah, I mean, look, they're, it's interesting because they've added a little bit of payroll in the in the Syndergaard deal that they made. You know, they're they're throwing mm -hmm. a little bit of money uh, the other way to Cleveland, who they, they just need some pitching, so they're going to take Patrick, a chance on Syndergaard. We, we're not talking about the – the the angels right now you are getting ahead of yourself you're i'm not talking about the angels i'm talking about the guardians right city guard just... went to cleveland right yes from the, the, angels. the dodgers am i going crazy you might be look you're under a little bit of medication right now i'm gonna I give don't... you a pass mm. what team is was noah Ahmed syndergaard Rosario on? went to the angels syndergaard went to the guardians and then who did the dodgers get we're not talking about any of those teams. You're the one talking about Cindergard in did, this Dodgers did I, did I, question. Was, so this was a three-team deal? No. Am I going crazy? You might be. I mean, well, Cindergard was with the Angels at the beginning of last year. Beginning. Oh my gosh, that's where I'm. Uh, that's where things are getting out of hand. Yeah. So the Dodgers are adding payroll, and look, oh they're, they're trying to clean the deck a little bit to save some money for Shohei Otani. I don't know how this impacts them exactly, but their experiment's been fine, man. They're doing it with you know role players and whatnot, and that's playing up just a little bit. So yeah, they. That, that's a good move for them, you know. Okay, there changing we go. Changing things up. There we go. We've sorted it out. Will definitely say Max Scherzer not big enough for you. I mean, he he is a big name, future Hall of Famer. He's Cooperstown bound, but that's it. That's the only name. And poor Jacob Degrom. He's trying to get away from this guy. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say he's just like, oh, keep this dude away from me. They keep getting reunited. All right, so bases are loaded right now. White Sox. Let's talk about the White Sox. Ooh. They're stepping up to the plate. They are selling, and why wouldn't they be? They are just not having a, a good time. No. But notably, Lucas Giolito went to the Angels. He did. Big big name. What do you think? Bases are loaded right now. That What's was happening huge. happening here? No, I mean, well, God, the White Sox, they are they are in disarray. But the Angels, man, they're going on. They're, they're being aggressive. That's that's where I think uh, Bill Schmidt did a good job to, to get Conor Van Skoyak, you know, for, for Mike Moustakis early, one of the first 
uh, of the trade deadline deals. Mm-hmm. It was in June. But still, Angels are always aggressive, sometimes maybe more than they actually should be. But yeah. uh, you like them getting a guy who's who's pitching for a, a contract next year. So uh, that very much was a was a good trade. I'm still only giving a base hit. Everyone moves up one base. That's it. All right, so that still means uh, runner scores, right? Runner scores, yes. All right, so it is uh, two nothing right now. There we go. Only one out. Only that. Only that phantom out that the and umpires have counting, not yet explained. I'm not counting the phantom out because, like, it just doesn't. <laughs> it shouldn't exist. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, uh, but yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Cindergard to the guards. Besides the fact that that name works so well with the name of that team, I did think Cinderguardians. Great it's, for the it's name. Perfect. The branding is incredible. It it is good. They, they just needed somebody. Rosario's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. So that's a win for them. But I'm just going to just gonna give them a walk. That's it. Hey, bases are still loaded, though. So another run scores. Yeah. At altitude, normally we have a lot of runs by this point. Only uh, only three. I think only three have scored here. That's a lot of walks today. You are very underwhelmed. I, I, that's, what I, that's why there was an out to start the inning. We're still waiting for the explanation here. We're oh, still waiting for it, that. It, it will never. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you could have scored Dude. any of these as... as Strikeouts, you know, but that would have been you. that would have been being honest. I, I gotta be, I gotta be true to these uh, be true. to the game. Gotta we're be. gonna we're gonna keep talking about the Angels because they are just obviously the most interesting team right now for a <laughs> bunch of reasons. They are. But a little Shohei Otani made history again. This time on Thursday, he pitched his first complete game in Game wow. One of a doubleheader in Detroit, and then in Game Two, homer twice. That so is So pitches amazing. a complete game shutout, just one hit in game one, goes back for game two, two home runs. Just, how, are we, how are we feeling about that? You set, you, with the bases loaded, I feel like you set me up there. You knew what was going to happen. Is it? Salami it, season. Yes. Salami that's season. That's gone. That's out of here. Grand I mean, slam. Otani continues to out Otani himself. Like, that's one of the reasons why you want to have double headers is just for Shohei Otani. Like, the Angels... Schedule should come out, and it's like, oh, the Angels have only 81 dates this year for games. They're like, oh, yeah, but they're all double headers for him to either start and then, you know, DH the second game. I Who would say no to that? I, that would be a, maybe a logistical nightmare. It's tremendous but, content, though. That would be a logistical nightmare. Wow. Yeah, yeah. no, that is... that is. Oh, I, we got we got tacos right now, because now it's 7 nothing. There we go. Let's go. I was, I was thinking about tweeting something out with tacos where you switch the O and the A when the A's, you know, we have SoCat when the other team scores seven, A's scored 11 last night. No one Is overcomplicates it, like you do. People would have gotten it though. The three people on Twitter that love dumb stuff like that would have loved a dumb thing like that. I'm not one of them. All right, next up to play. <laughs> this is not trade deadline related because we know this guy isn't going anywhere. Ryan McMahon. Ah. Today it is fourth multi-hit game through his last seven games. Yeah, that's great. He's uh, what are we? He's heating up. He's staying hot. I mean, yeah. defensively, he's had uh, some issues, but you you like to see that he's been able to do that. I'm just gonna give him a base hit on that for right now. All right. Uh, as I said, I like that uh, earlier. Only had. Uh, uh, had three consecutive games with no strikeouts. So, yes. you know, he's putting the ball in play. Defense there. There was there was one today where uh, he just narrowly missed. But uh, nevertheless, hopefully get those hiccups out of the way. And uh, his success at the plate kind of is a, is a catalyst mm-hmm. for him to, to turn things around on defense. Yeah. All right. We got one last batter up. And this is a visual. There's a visual here. How do you feel about this Rockies-themed car? Tiff, do we have this pick? So this was posted on Twitter earlier today. It's got all the baseball stitching. It's got a little Rockies logo. And on the, it's a Jeep that we're looking at. And on the cover for the spare tire, we've got the red line through the name Monfort. I did not notice that. I noticed the baseball part. I didn't. I thought, I thought it might have said, like, Monsanto or something like no, that. No, it says Monfort, as in the Monfort family, owners of the Colorado Rockies. Where was this taken? Do we know? I do not know where this was taken. I can tell you. First glance, it almost looked like an ocean uh, on the picture on the left. It's not. I don't it's know what that is. not. That's just, like, what things look like in the distance. Um, but John the Naptist I posted do. that on Twitter earlier today. Uh, this is hysterical. Photoshopped or not photoshopped? No, this looks real. This I like does the, not look photoshopped. 
The fact that it looks like a baseball is is pretty good. I, I for I think a Jeep that looks like a baseball like this is cool enough. And then this is this is a statement. I'll say that um, they would never use this literal automobile to drive relievers out uh, <laughs> out from the bullpen to home plate. That's they, that's a given. They wouldn't. I think they have a better likelihood of Dinger driving out a reliever on the motorcycle. I think I think that one was an <laughs> unfortunate full count pitch clock violation. That was a, that was a strikeout there on that one. But I I, I like. Uh, Look, I like the community coming together. Uh, that That's obviously certainly a positive thing in general. And just people getting creative with their automobiles. So I've creative. Never, you don't Everyone's see enough, so creative. You don't see enough baseball mobiles. No, you like really don't. And I, I want more of them. If I could do that with my car, like I would. I think so. I definitely would. When All right, Patrick, we batted around. How do you feel? Uh, Besides good. underwhelmed, is that the most underwhelming batting around you've for, ever participated? For being in? underwhelmed, I mean, it was it was one of the where I think Statcast would go back and look and say the expected runs might have been more like three, but there were what six because Seven. because of Seven all the walks runs because the so balls that were put in play were a little bit soft. We started with the out to beginning because the trade deadline seemed underwhelming, but I think it might have just had to do with uh, you know again the phraseology of your questions. Produced seven runs. That was good. Yeah. All right. Good job, Patrick. That was fantastic. Good Likewise. Good job. Likewise. And, uh, you know, look, if you want more good jobs, we do good jobs on Twitter at DNVR <laughs> underscore Rockies. My good job account is at Patrick T. Lyons on Twitter. I do a terrible job on Twitter and all platforms, but you can find me at the Susie Hunter. On all platforms. On all platforms. Wonderful, <laughs> momentous, baseball, podcast, all of those words are things I say. But you know what they really say about all that stuff? I have, n- I have no idea. This is I've never heard what they say. It's only as good as your <laughs> next show. So the next one is going to be fantastic because tomorrow on the DMVR Sports Channel, live on YouTube at 1 p.m., we're talking with Jeff Sanders of the San Diego Union Tribune. What are the Padres going to do? What can we expect from them here at Coors Field? Again, that will be live on the DVR Sports Channel at 1 p.m. right here on YouTube.